Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015 Rolex Boys Player of the Year from Shreveport, Louisiana, Philip Barbary. First of all, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity he has given me to achieve this goal and give him the glory. Mr. Hamlin, thank you for creating this amazing junior golf tour that not only builds great golfers, but also great people. I'm truly grateful for the opportunities and people I've met through the AJGA, and without you, it would not be possible. Thank you, Rolex and Ms. Munya Meshball for your generous sponsorship for the AJGA for so many years. Thank you, Mr. Chris Berry of PJ National for, allow for allowing us to play at such a historic place this week. I remember coming here when I was just seven years old, playing the prestige tournament. This is a place my family and I love to visit. Thank you, Polo, Ralph Lauren, and Mr. Bill Huntington for sponsoring the AJGA and providing us with arguably the best apparel in golf every time we play an AJGA tournament. Thank you, Titleist, Foot Joy, Mr. Jim Ahern, Cliff Walzek, Bubba, and also Nick Gillum, and everyone else on the Titleist Foot Joy staff for all your help over the years. To my mom and dad, I would not be here if it was not for your hard work and support. You all mean everything to me. Thank you for making this all possible for me. I know it is a big sacrifice, but being able to see your faces after every round I play, no matter how I play, makes it all worth it for me. Thank you to my sisters, Catherine and Caroline, for your loving support and your endless retweets. <laughs> Thank you to my grandparents for always showing their love for me and also making the huge effort to be here. I'd like to thank everyone in Shreveport, Louisiana for doing everything possible for the good of junior golf and also my golf career. I'd like to thank David Toms for building a world-class golf facility I get to practice and play every day and showing a true love for helping us with anything we need. Although they could not make it, I'd like to thank my coach Cameron McCormick and my trainer back in Shreveport, James Hertz, for helping me accomplish my dreams and goals. As many of you know who play this great and challenging game, there are many ups and downs. Although this year has been filled with great times on the course, this was not always the case before. It was through this time that I really learned who I am. I not only learned who I am as a golfer, but also as a person. It was easy to be happy when everything was smooth in my life, but it's through the rough times that helped me learn and grow to eventually bring out the best in me. At the beginning of my golf career, I had many accomplishments, winning various national and international tournaments. For me, it was hard when these successes stopped occurring. That is what happened for most of 2013 and 2014. I knew exactly what I was capable of doing, and I got to see it right in front of my eyes as my best friend won the 2014 Rolex Junior Player of the Year. I was extremely happy for him, but I knew I could be where he was. Too often during my struggles, I would be confused after tournaments about what was happening to my game. I became frustrated, and for a period of time, I stopped using my God-given talents to their full potential. I was not performing well, and I was not doing what was necessary in order to reach my goals and dreams. Although I did not realize it, this rough period in my life was a, blessing, was a blessing I will forever be thankful for. I believe God was making me stronger, bringing me closer to Him, and as a result, making my life better. Before I could completely turn my golf game around and how, to how I wanted it to be, I noticed that I needed to be happy no matter how I played on the course. One of my favorite Bible verses, Philippians 4.12 says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. There are many people in this world with either disabilities or other obstacles that wish they had the chance to work hard to be successful. In fact, there are people who want to have that bad day on the golf course we complain about. This is why Emily Sumner is an inspiration for me, and she, had, and she should be for everyone else in this room. I did not know about her story until tonight, but it's just really cool what she, what she did with her, with her symptoms and just to keep going and let nothing stop her. No matter what my day on the course was like, I need to be thankful for the opportunity to grow from that experience in order to make me better for the next time I play. The best part about this principle is that it works in every aspect of life. And whatever I'm doing, God has made me strong enough to be satisfied in whatever the outcomes of daily life may bring. I can say through my success this year, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, 
and that is by the love of Jesus Christ. Next, it was through my good friend Cooper Dossie that I realized I needed to play golf to glorify the Lord. I thought to myself, I have been given all the tools to be successful for God, and if I am not given my best, someone else deserves what I have. I learned that I needed to make the most out of every opportunity and day that I'm given with the talent I'm capable of developing. God taught me this lesson and is without question one of the reasons why I'm standing here tonight. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, if you meditate on what God says about you day and night, you will prosper and have success in everything you do. It was after last year's Polo Golf Junior Classic that I started being more committed to my workouts, my practice routines, and most importantly, myself. I began to have more drive and passion in what I wanted to accomplish. I had not seen big success in some time, but I had to trust God's plan and give my all each and every day. Now I realize it was not the wins that got me here, but the will, belief, and confidence that I instilled in myself every day long before the blessings that would take place in 2015. One year ago in this room, I was faced with a challenge. It was a challenge to rise past my previous struggles, to grow closer to God, and bring my potential to reality. The next time you want to complain, quit practicing, or even give up on whatever you're doing, the next time you're facing a situation or hardship that is unavoidable, or for the next time you're going through an unexpected event, like being five down with eight holes to play in a golf match, I challenge everyone to pray, have faith, and work hard, because as I've proven, you can still win. Thank you and God bless.